Hello, it's me again. Welcome to lesson six. In this lesson, we are going to get started to the depth of field. This tool is related to the focus and the blur. We are going to see different elements, which are going to help us to control this technique. One of these elements is the aperture. This is a basic one, number F. This determines the size of the hole through which the light comes in. The other two elements are focal distance, referring to the object's distance, and also our position towards the object. So, we need to pay attention to these three variables to master focus effects. Before starting, keep the following in mind because it's very important. First, look at this camera. What the focus does is measuring the distance between objects. Then, the focus is not just a point. The focus point is actually an area, which can be wider or reduced. Let's see an example. I'm going to use this point as a reference. The area is going to expand one-third forwards and two-thirds backwards. And this means that the area is always going to be wider backwards. Is it possible to reduce the focal distance? Yes, it is. At this point, we are going to use the aperture options. Remember that aperture refers to how open or close is the iris in the lens. So, if the iris it is the whole of the lens is open, we are letting more light come in through the camera. As a consequence, the depth of field is going to be lower and we'll be able to get a focused object and to blur the rest of the image. So, closing the aperture means closing the hole as well. In this case, we get less light inside it while we get a clearer scene. Let me explain it to you. Let's set a reference aperture at 5.6, for instance. So, if we go up from this value to 8 or even 11, we'll be closing the hole and thus losing the amount of light by a half. So pay attention. With the depth of field, it works the other way around. It is. Bigger numbers refer to a reduced income light, while smaller numbers let more light come through the camera. For example, if we move from 5.6 to 4 and then to 2.8, what we are doing is doubling the amount of light each time. If you remember, it's similar with speed. We start from zero in the exposure meter, and then if we move to the right, we are doubling it, and if we move to the left, we are reducing it by a half. It's also possible to use intermediate values, for example, between 5.6 and 8, we are going to find two different values. And also, it happens between 5.6 and 4, as you can see in here. Using these values implies setting the light points, which is going to let us control the incoming light. In your case, it can be a bit different, because the range of values will depend on the camera we are using, as well as if we are working with an angular focus, or for example, zoom lens, or telephoto, etc. So, the aperture is always conditioned by the focal distance. As I said at the beginning, there are different elements which depend on the lens, like the focus mechanism, the opening or closing of the aperture, and the focal distances. Now, take your camera and have a look at it. So you can see, in the lens or another part of the camera, according to the mother we are using, we are going to find these numbers, sure, 18 and 55. These figures refer to the focal distance of the lens, which moves from angular to normal and then to zoom lens. Next to these numbers, we are going to find these others, one column 3.5, 3.6, and you may ask, 
What does these numbers refer to? Well, they indicate to us the maximum opening of the aperture we can use. Let's see it with an example. Imagine we use 18, then I can use 3.5, and if we are using 55, then we can work with an opening of 5.6, which is the highest opening we can use to capture light. Let's take this other lens of 50 millimeters, which only has one focal distance. Next to it, we see it appears 1.1.4. It is. This lens allows us to use a higher opening, and as a consequence, we also get more option of blurry effects. We can also appreciate it doesn't have a movable focal distance nor a range of aperture. What are we going to do during the exercises? Well, we are going to check what happens after changing the focal distance, the aperture, my position towards the elements we are shooting, in order to control the width of the focused area. Also, let's say we zoom in the image. We'll notice that the values referring to a close aperture are going to change. Remember, guys, that the values on the left, it is the highest values, are connected to the opening of the aperture. And those in the middle, like 5.6 and 8, are considered intermediate values, although it's going to depend on the lens we are using. And then from 8 onwards, we talk about close apertures, with which obviously we get less light and more clarity. So, when I zoom in the image, the range of value is going to change. We talk about an open aperture from 5.6 until 22, 23 and so on. Let's do now a really funny exercise to practice how to widen or reduce the depth of field following some parameters. Shall we? It's pretty easy and we can do it indoors or outdoors. To do this exercise, we are going to use lined up objects to work with depth of fields, since, as I told you before, we are going to work with this technique to focus on different objects placed in different positions. Here I've chosen three Playmobil figures. They are cool, right? But you can choose anything else you fancy. For example, if we are outdoors, we can go to the beach and use different elements. What we are going to do is setting a certain distance between the objects, as well as establishing the focal point in the middle object. Now we are going to change the focal distance, working first with 18 millimeters and then with 55. In both cases, we'll be altering the range of aperture to see what happens with the focus and the aperture. So guys, when we do this, we see different alterations in the image. Say we use an angular lens and an open aperture while focusing on the object in the middle. What happens? Well, first, don't forget that the focus widens one third forward and two third backwards. So let's say that after taking a picture, we notice that the first object is a bit blurred. The next step will be to try with different aperture values since 3.5, 5.6, 11, 22, when working with 18 millimeters, and we'll do the same with 55, from minimum to maximum. Guys, you don't need to try with all the values and intervals. I just want you to give it a try with a few of them, both open and close aperture. Also, we are going to notice that the closer the aperture we use, the clearer the image will be. I recommend you to use a tripod. If you don't have one at home, use any other support, like at the table or any other surface. This is important because as we are closing the aperture and using a slow speed, depending on the ISO we are using, we are going to get a blurred image. If this happens, you can always blow the ISO up, but much better if we have a tripod since the quality will be higher. Before starting with the exercise, we need to make sure that the focus point is on the middle object, especially when working on an automatic mode. This is really, really, really important. If this happens, we won't be able to see the effects on the image, so the exercise will be useless. 
So guys, if you want, you can change from an automatic focus to a manual one. It would be better in this case. Also, it's possible to use first the auto mode, because as we've seen in this course, if we press lightly the button, it's possible to estimate the distance. So, once we heard the beep, we can shift to manual mode to block the distance. By doing this, we'll make sure we don't miss the focus point. So guys, as you can see, this room has plenty of light. So the pictures we get are going to be slightly darker. That's why I'm going to change the settings one step right to overexposure. Can you guess why? Yes, that's it. Because most cameras are set to reflect 80% of the light. So if we are in a bright setting, the image is prone to be darker than expected. And we don't want that, right? Let's start with the exercise, shall we? I'm going to set ISO at 100 and use an open aperture so that the three objects appear in the viewfinder. This is very important, guys. I'm also going to set fast speed, but not that much. I think it is fine. Now I'm going to close a little bit the aperture at 5.6. We can see that the camera changes the speed to 130 which is a little bit slower. It's not a huge problem as long as we are using a tripod. Again, I'm going to click the aperture to 8, and you can see that the speed moves to 115. Then F11, and the speed, as you can see, sets at 1.8. Then F16, speed 1.4 f22 and a half a second see if we keep on modifying the aperture like say we use a 22 aperture which is the closest one all the objects in the image will be focused also if we opt for an angular lens we are going to get more clarity in a few seconds when working with 55 millimeters we're going to see that it's easier to get blur defects working with zoom lens don't forget, this is a golden rule. We'll get a better blurry effect with higher focal distances. Let's close it now to 5.6 and compensate. Shoot, and then close aperture again at 8. Compensate and shoot. Let's do now the same exercise, switching to 55 millimeters. We are going to restructure the three objects so that they appear again within the framing without altering the distance between them. With this lens, we'll be able to open the aperture until 5.6. Guys, it's important that you don't forget that longer distances means less light. I'm going to adjust again the speed to 125. It's all right since we are using a tripod, so it won't be blurred. Let's close the aperture to 8 and compensate the speed to 113. Again, close to 11 and speed 16. Close F16 and keep closing until F22 or F32. The objective of this exercise is to see that opener apertures and longer focal distances cause a greater soft focus. It's crucial that we are close enough to the first object because otherwise we won't be able to perceive properly the blurred elements. So, guys, just to sum up, in order to get a low depth of field, we're going to set the following parameters. The first one, we need an open diaphragm, like 3.5, 5.6, or even higher. Secondly, we're going to work with a long focal length, longer than 50 millimeters, if possible. In the third place, the best way to get better blurry effects is focusing at a very short distance to the object. And how are we getting a high depth of field? 
In this case, we're going to use closed diaphragms like F11, F16, F22, depending on the values we have in the camera, obviously. Secondly, we need to set a short focal length, the closest to the wide angle we can, like 18 millimeters, 20 or 24. Thirdly, we are going to focus further away from the object. By placing the objects, say at a distance of 3 meters, the objects will be made much clearer.